Hi, I am Yusuf Sahildoğlu uh, and I will talk about Laplacian with a special focus on geometry processing applications that it is involved with. Uh, so, let me first just give a, a quick preview of the 52 slides ahead. So I will basically first talk about the applications where the Laplacian is directly involved. Uh, so it will be a high level, a, a mild start. Uh, and these applications then may, I will talk about the math uh, involved to make those applications possible. Uh, I will focus on some of them uh, in detail and some I will just uh, keep it light. Uh, yeah, so to that end, I will first give you the discretization um, and the Laplacian matrix, the graph Laplacian, different versions, uh, and then I will do the math part where I get the spectrum of this Laplacian and put it in action to revisit some applications with, uh, uh, with more details. Uh, yeah. And then I will leave the spectrum alone and I will go to the Laplacian matrix directly and I will use it in other applications like deformation, uh, compression, parametrization uh, with some of my outputs, uh, remeshing, correspondence and smoothing. And that will be the end of the uh, show. Uh, so now let's start it uh, with, <coughs> with the real conversation. So what is the Laplacian then? Uh, so we should notice that it is directly related to the continuous uh, Laplace Beltrami operator whose purpose is to link the geometry of the manifold to the heat flow. So there's uh, this connection uh, with physics uh, and the heat flow Actually, it captures lots of geometric information, and we do that with the continuous Laplace Beltram operator. And in practice, we go to the approximation uh, using the discrete graph Laplacian. And it is customary to call the Laplace Beltram operator as a Laplacian, by the way. So we use these words interchangeably, the, the two terms. Uh, and Laplacian, yeah, I will mostly go with this term. Uh, and the intuition of this matrix is that it basically captures a uh, deviation of a point from its neighbors. Uh, so you have some function at a point and it is also defined on all, all other points including its neighbors. So it, it, it checks how much it is different from its neighbors. So these are the applications that uh, I have experience with. There are more more applications I probably forget here but still they make a good uh, set of things to discuss uh, so for the feature extraction it can be uh, features that are defining the symmetry axis curve which is made possible with this paper and there is also pointwise uh, features descriptors again coming from the spectrum of the Laplacian Segmentation can also be made possible uh, by uh, defining a, a harmonic field uh, that satisfies a, the Laplace equation and then we can go wild with it. Uh, also the clustering Laplacian spectrum gives us embedded, embedded coordinates which is useful for clustering. Shape editing or deformation is also made possible with the Laplacian matrix. Uh, and I will actually derive the equations necessary to implement this framework later. Uh, compression is also uh, a useful thing given a, a mesh with many vertices uh, and we just keep a con set of control points uh, and the Laplacian and in the recovery we can recover the shape. It is a lossy compression, we cannot recover it exactly but it is still a good output. Parametrization, an important topic that relates geometry processing to computer graphics directly because this is the first step to the texture mapping of the computer graphics world. And the task is a 2D surface embedded in 3D, like the cat head here. I want to flatten it into 2D plane 
where my JPEG image uh, lives and then I overlay it with these triangles and then transfer them into the 3D back, pull it back, which gives you the texture mapping. So we will see how Laplacian is useful to make this transformation from 3D to 2D. Uh, simplification, one of the important remeshing applications, is also made possible uh, with the Laplacian and it preserves the Laplacian spectrum. Uh, thanks to this new paper uh, and it also preserves uh, appearance uh, accurately. Shape correspondence is a very important topic. Uh, we map, we find that map from one shape to the other uh, and again the Laplacian based representation specifically the eigenbasis provided by the spectrum of the Laplacian uh, gives us a fast way to find dense correspondences easily and fastly. Um, another way to utilize Laplacian in correspondence business is uh, to get these spectral embedding coordinates by the Laplacian matrix eigenvectors and then they have less degree of freedom to deal with the purple and black ones here and you can align them easily. Uh, with some rigid transformations like ICP stuff uh, and then it gives you a good initialization not the perfect solution as you can see due to distortions but it is a good initialization mostly and the final application I discussed not the final I guess but anyway uh, smoothing where you have some noise and this high frequency stuff needs to be removed uh, and again made possible by the uh, neighborhood analysis coming with the Laplacian definition. Sampling, we sometimes want, don't want to deal with all uh, 10,000 vertices, rather we just separate uh, important sample points, sample vertices, subset of the vertices, and it is made possible with, again, the Laplacian. Uh, one way to go is with the uh, Laplacian giving us the heat kernel signature and its local maxima will give us the uh, samples. Distance computation is another extremely important topic in geometric processing. So, for instance, that uh, correspondence business, we uh, or this one, uh, so we may want to compare pairwise distances, their consistency to match two shapes. Just one application, there are others obviously. Uh, so, the biharmonic distance is made possible as well as the diffusion distance, so these are based on the heat flow. They are made possible by the spectrum of the Laplacian and it is they are comparable to the geodesic case. Well, it, they are even more advantageous when we have some topological noise involved because thanks to the uh, heat flow which goes through many paths, unlike the single path, the shortest path in the geodesic. So thanks to that uh, multiple path analysis through heat flow, we get a more topologically robust distance. And yeah, so these are the applications. Now, let me <coughs> discretize this continuous Laplace Beltrame operator and get this Laplacian matrix and go on with it to uh, solve these problems easily and uh, discreetly in practice. <coughs> so the simplest Laplacian discretization is this uniform one <coughs> where you just put uh, the degree of the vertex here, the final result from Wikipedia to the diagonals and then if the vertex is adjacent to the others so you put uh, minus, the minus one to those entries in the column. So this is this belongs to vertex one. I look at the vertex one, it is associated with two and five. So to the column two and five I have minus one. Uh, and you can also get it by this subtraction. The good news is this is symmetric because if one is adjacent to five, then five is also adjacent to one implicitly. Uh, so which means I have one five here and corresponding 5, 1 here. Uh, 
But the bad news is this is uniform, so it means that when I am processing this vertex, for instance, I get the same contribution from 3, 5, and 6, which looks okay in this unlucky example, but in general, this 5 can be at a uh, distant location, then I really want less contribution from 5. So I want something geometry aware. And to get that, I go to this popular cotangent Laplace scene. First, please notice the difference so for the Laplacian construction. Uh, basically, if you replace this one with the Wij, the cotangent weight, then I have W minus Wij here, and the sum of ones give you the degree here, obviously. Now I don't have that definition, I don't have the degree concept, so I just have to get the sum, whatever it is. So this is what I want, because for the VI, uh, when I am processing VI, I get a contribution from VJ that is uh, inversely proportional to the length between VI and VJ. Okay, and also, I also consider the areas uh, of the uh, neighboring triangles that share this edge. If, they, if we have high area, then I have high contribution because this is a significant portion. But instead of putting all those lengths and areas in your long uh, expression, we go to trigonometry and use this cotangent formula, which gives that uh, output exactly. Okay, so all you need to do is to get these opposite angles, alpha and beta, facing this uh, <coughs> edge in action. And that's it, actually. And it is also symmetric because when you process this vertex as Vi, then this becomes your Vj, for instance. <clears throat> then the weight from this vertex to ver this vertex, I will still consider these two uh, angles. Hence, it is the same. So Vi, Vj weight is same as Vj, Vi weight. Hence, the symmetricity. If I have gone with these two angles, however, then I would lose the symmetricity because Vi, Vj will use theta 1 and theta 2 and Vj, Vi later, it will use this theta 3 and theta 4 which is not the same as, necessarily the same as uh, theta 1 and theta 2. And actually it is called the mean value Laplacian, mean value coordinates. Uh, it is not symmetric but it has some guarantee on the positivity uh, of the weights so everything will be positive here in your matrix. So your matrix will be positive definite, which is a good thing. But again, it won't be symmetric, which is a bad thing. Uh, so during computations, uh, uh, because symmetric matrices are easier to analyze. And if I have symmetric and positive, have both of the both words, then the eigenvectors will be orthonormal. Like they will form a good basis, which is a good thing. So we stick with the cotangent version because we definitely like this symmetric property. And if I have negative weights, which is possible with the obtuse angles, angles larger than uh, 90 degrees, then cotangent will be negative as we know. Then for those cases, you can just uh, trim them to zero. For instance, it's a nice heuristic. And Another way to solve this problem is uh, obtuse triangles, they occur with the bad triangulation. So if in this example, actually, there is no obtuse triangle because there is no skinny triangle, obtuse angle. So you can remesh your mesh in the beginning to get a good triangulation, then do this cotangent. It's also an option. Another discretization is designed for point clouds where I don't have this triangle and hence the angles uh, so I can go to this kernel like I put a weight that is proportional to the uh, inversely proportional to the length between xi and xk uh, and also normalized by this tricky parameter uh, so first of all to make this works I need a dense sampling which is not very good, uh, not efficient. Also, it is defined for all vertices, for all pairs in this form. Uh, 
which is again not good because then I won't have a sparse matrix so it will be hard to process, hard to store etc. Luckily I can make it sparse by just attaching ways to the k nearest neighbors only and keep zero for the other entries. So there are solutions like that. And an active area, so this is an active area. Even in the last year we have seen two related papers. One is addressing the polygon mesh problem because uh, we have dealt with the triangle mesh here. The angles are defined for the triangles. Uh, but you can have a quad mesh or a hybrid mesh or a general polygon mesh. Um, then uh, one way to go is obviously to triangulate uh, the quad mesh for instance. It is It can be done easily. Uh, but apparently this way is better, so they basically introduce a virtual vertex within the polygon and they connect it to the polygon vertices to get their triangles. But the computation of that virtual uh, vertex is enough to publish this work uh, because it is more powerful than that naive idea. Another recent work addresses the non-manifold meshes, triangle meshes, but they will be non-manifold like uh, irregular meshes that we don't like they fail most of the simulations like for instance one edge is uh, shared by three or more faces which is the non-manifold case uh, so again a tricky a basic solution could be just forget about that bad triangulation that non-manifold triangulation and use the point cloud Laplace in here but again apparently sticking with that non-manifold uh, surface and computing a totally different Laplacian turns out to be a better alternative. Okay, so these are our Laplacian uh, construction stuff. Now let's revisit all those applications I talked about before uh, and do some math and actually understand them better how they work. Uh, to that end, I first need to get the spectrum of the Laplacian. Let's stick with the Cotan Laplacian, okay, because it is the most common choice even currently. Uh, yeah, so L phi is one of the eigenvectors of it. Uh, it will have n eigenvectors if I have an n by n Laplacian matrix, as we know, where n is the number of vertices uh, on my mesh. And uh, L is always square, etc. Yeah, so this is one of the eigenvectors or eigenfunctions, uh, and this is the eigenvalue. Okay, so eigenvector it just changes uh, the scale, not the direction. Sometimes, so since L is uh, symmetric positive definite, uh, these eigenvectors will be orthonormal to each other, like they will be orthogonal to each other, so it means that they can define a nice basis for my space. But sometimes we also find that orthonormal vectors, uh, they eigenvectors, they want, I want them to be orthonormal with respect to the area matrix. So I want to get more from the triangulation, I also want to consider the area. So this gives more geometry aware eigenvectors and the eigenbases. Hence, it is more preferable. That's why I mention it. All you have to do is to plug this area matrix within this formulation. Then the eigenvectors will be orthonormal with respect to A. And to solve this, obviously, you can take the inverse of it and put it to the left, and this cancels out. So I have this matrix in the end. Inverse of A is not a big deal because A is diagonal. So inverse is just the reciprocal of the diagonal entries uh, and a given entry is the Voronoi area of that vertex, the height vertex, which is the gray area here. And again, you can approximate it like this. It seems to take one third of the whole area of this little triangle. So you take all the one thirds from the neighbor areas, okay? It is very easy to get that. So this matrix, uh, I now have those eigenvectors. Regardless, okay, so either eigenvectors of this 
matrix or the original L. Now I go to my applications. Indeed, they use the again I emphasize they use the array based framework because it uh, appreciates it it considers area differences. Hence, it makes the uh, Laplacian less sensitive to the tessellation. Okay, because areas will handle it for us. So in this application, we want to extract a descriptor, okay, which is going to capture the amount of heat diffused from x to y in time t. So this is a multi-scale descriptor. It's, it's going to be defined for different t values. But for the point-wise descriptor, I want the heat to go from x to itself. Okay, so you will use x here. Then you have your point-wise descriptor. And here, uh, this is the eigenfunction. Uh, by the way, in theory, we should go to all the eigenfunctions, but in practice, we just use the smallest uh, 20 or 15 of them, uh, which is very fast to compute, like 0 0.1 seconds for a 12K, 12,000 times 12,000 Laplacian against the sparse matrix. Uh, okay, so uh, X means so I this is one of the 12,000 vertices right so it says to you that go to the X entry of that 12,000 by one column vector which is the eigenfunction get the X entry and that is the term here similarly get the X entry again because I will go from X to X for the HKS and also uh, scale this factor with uh, the corresponding eigenvalue. So what you get is, uh, for small times, it captures the local details. Because the time is small, the heat doesn't have much time to travel. So you just look at the local structure, which looks very similar on the fingers, for instance. Uh, so this belongs to a small time, probably. Yeah. Uh, but for the large times, you look at the uh, global structure of the shape from the point of view of that point. Okay, so these are the differences. So now let's again take a quick break from the applications and talk about this uh, spectrum of the eigen of the Laplacian matrix because we will use it a lot. So here I just used it. But now let me give you more intuition on that. So first of all, eigenvectors. So spectrum consists of the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, right? So eigenvectors are orthonormal, which is nice. But eigenvalues, they reveal global properties that cannot be understood by just looking at the edge structure. Okay, so what is one property? If you have k-connected components in your mesh, then you will have k zero eigenvalues. Okay, you sort them in ascending order. The first k will be zero if you have k connected components. So if the general case you have only one connected component, the Homer guy for instance, then only lambda one will be zero. And the corresponding eigenvector will be constant. But anyway, let's stick with the eigenvalue. But in this example, for instance, I have three components, so lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 will be 0. So you can immediately infer this by just looking at the eigenvalues of the Laplace, which is a very cool thing. Also, uh, another cool thing, let's stick with uh, the connected graph, like this one or this one, so forget about this. Then lambda 2 is non-zero by the argument here. And but the value of lambda 2 is also very important. It is called the algebraic connectivity. The greater this value, the more connected the graph is. Like here, the lambda 2 in this graph is higher than the lambda 2 in this graph because I have more edges, more connections here. Let's also go to the eigenvector of this second eigenvalue. Okay, which is the first non-zero eigenvalue. It is called the Fiedler vector due to the inventors, inventor. 
uh, and it allows binary partitioning. It is also known as the spectral clustering. Basically, take this eigenvector again. It has uh, twelve thousand components. If you have a twelve thousand vertex mesh like this human, and you will uh, classify the negative components as yellow and positive as blue, uh, pink. So you have this nice partitioning. Uh, by nice I mean it doesn't oscillate, right? It is all the pinks are together, all the yellows are together. I have also looked at the other uh, eigenvectors, the negative pink, positive yellow business. So they still have some uh, uh, smoothness actually, but they start to become like oscillating, like uh, pink to yellow, then to pink again. So they are not much informative. Uh, so the theoretical guarantee here is on the second eigenvector only, and it allows you binary partitioning. You can make K-way partitioning by extending this idea. Uh, at the end, the second eigenvector of the Laplacian is also important, just notice that. So now let me paint the uh, vertices by the corresponding co entries in the eigenvectors, or we call it eigenfunction at that time. So again, I have 12,000 vertices here and 12,000 entry in, in a given eigenvector. So vertex 67, I will go look at the 67th entry in this long column vector and I normalize it into 0, 1 and get this result. So what you see here is it is very smooth, especially for the small uh, eigenvectors, the eigenvectors corresponding to the small eigenvalues. So in a sense, the eigenvalue gives you the uh, frequency. The higher it is, the higher the frequency, the higher the oscillations. Here, for instance, I it is not even a very big eigenvector, but still I see kind of some oscillations from blue to green, then to red, then to green again, which I don't observe here. Okay, so the low, the first eigenvectors, the small ones, they are smooth, slowly varying functions, which are very valuable. Actually, in the extreme case, if you go to the very first eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue 0, because this is definitely 0, so this is the smoothest function possible, which doesn't vary at all. Hence, it is the constant function, so it, everything will be colored blue here, which is not informative, so we generally discard it and start with the second eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvector. Okay, so now uh, let's use this orthonormality, this good basis, and then it is this eigenbasis of the Laplacian matrix. Basically, the eigenvectors are my uh, x, y, z, car like the, the those Cartesian axes. Uh, they are orthonormal. This is an extension of the discrete cosine basis. Another good basis, which is nice to define images. Actually, the JPEG compression is based on the, this cosine basis where you get some from some basis, this coefficient, some from another, etc. Same idea is applied to meshes to compress the mesh and to re recover it back with those coefficients. Okay, so let's go back to the applications. Where were we? We have handled the Descriptors, actually here is another descriptor, just a quick note, called Global Point Signature. Uh, I use, <coughs> given a point, I describe it again with multiple dimensions, and each dimension I get the corresponding component from the eigen vector, the first vector, second vector, C, I am using the small ones, uh, and I also normalize it with some with the corresponding IGML. Uh, yeah, so distance is also related to this spectrum. So 
instead of uh, multiplying the eigenfunctions as I have done in the heat kernel case, I will subtract the corresponding values to find the distance from x to y and again this will be time-based. You can get rid of the time parameter with this more recent work uh, but the idea is the same. Uh, you again take the difference of the corresponding uh, eigen function components, square it and also normalize it with the corresponding eigen value. So this simulates this one and this one, they simulate the heat diffusion. Hence, they will go through more paths, especially in the case of a topological noise. So for instance here, if I have a noisy edge from foot to foot, the geodesic distance, normally it would have gone like this from above, it will be extremely shortened because of this bad connection. But with the uh, diffusion-based, Laplacian-based distances, I basically uh, sent the heat from here to here. It will go from this bad shortcut, unfortunately, but it will also go from other paths. And in the end, I will take the average of those paths, which are in the first k uh, eigenvectors. Okay, hence it is more stable under topological noise. So another application, segmentation. So I have this coordinates. Okay, so the GPS, for instance, this is uh, kind of a, a coordinate. Uh, given P, I get a different set of coordinates. If you, So P has three dimensions, right? X, Y, Z. If you use the first three, you have X prime, Y prime, Z prime. So you have different coordinates. And you can even go to the other, to more dimensions because it is available thanks to the spectrum. So in general, they don't stay with three. You go to uh, like 20, 30 dimensions. And then in that space, you make some k-means clustering, which will give you consistent clusters, even if you change the pose, because the Laplacian matrix, it will not change the content will not change under isometric deformations or a simpler term under articulations. So its spectrum will not change either. Hence you can use it safely uh, to get the same result under articulation. Another way to segment is uh, you get the harmonic field uh, by solving the Laplace equation and you, you get the harmonic uh, field from that you get this color field uh, and the iso curve of this color field here and here for different purposes here uh, it is the it's a very valuable iso curve it allows you to perform boundary segmentations here because they appear in boundaries it can also allow you to get symmetry axis because this curve for instance in this version the harmonic field is defined using two points. If you select the correct two points, then it will be disk close to the two points and then it grows and then shrinks back. Because in your Laplace equation, uh, you uh, have boundary conditions where you get the maximum value in one end and minimum value in the other end. And it gives you this effect. And it is useful to extract the symmetry axis, the reflective symmetry axis, even under articulations. <clears throat> Here is another application, the formation. Now I forget about the spectrum, okay? I will use the matrix directly, but I will change the matrix slightly. I call it the general Laplacian, it is generally called that. Uh, so this is like this, okay? So First, to get the slight difference, I should maybe show you back the original cotangent Laplacian we are dealing with. See here, in the diagonal, I have the sum of weights, okay? And in the easy case, sum of weights is the degree. Uh, and in the non-diagonals, if there is an adjacency, I have negative the weight. Okay, so diagonal, degree, or sum. 
So in this version, diagonal is just one, okay? Diagonal is just one. And again, for the adjacent entries, I have a non-zero, yeah, but the di value is again different. Before it was minus the weight, here it is minus one over, uh, mi minus uh, a different weight. So it was, uh, in the uniform case, it will be minus one over the degree. Okay, so why I go to this Laplacian? Because I want to go to this special so-called differential coordinates or delta coordinates. So for a given vertex vi, the red one, differential coordinate is the following. It is the vector from the center of its neighbors towards the query point vi. So basically you have the vectors from vj to vi, vj to vi, all of them, and you take their average. Degree means the number of neighbors. Hence you give the, get this purple vector, which encapsulates local information. If you look carefully, it encapsulates the normal direction scaled by the curvature amount. So if there is no curvature around, uh, like the red is on this plane, then it will be zero which is fine because it's a planar region but in this case for us it is non-zero it's a non-zero vector um, so I can get it like this and uh, this is the uniform case easier to understand but again uh, I should go with the cotangent case to be more geometry aware and then I will use this delta basically I will change these weights I will show it how to do it but before let me give you a spoiler alert if you go with the Uniform weights, after the formation, you will have these artifacts. But with cotangent weights, even with regardless of the initial tessellation, I get the good result. Okay, so that's why we will go with the cotangents. Now, come back to the delta business. So, why do I go to the differential coordinates? The reason is simple actually. Uh, I want to preserve those differential coordinates which is obtained by multiplying the original coordinates with the Laplacian general Laplacian constructed that way so that differential coordinates should better be very close to the current differential coordinates based on the current set of vertices which are the deformed vertices I want to find V that minimizes this equation so on its own, this term called the regularization term is not very interesting because it will just keep the mesh in its original location because it is already happy with those initial coordinates. So I want to disturb, perturb, disturb the mesh a little bit by just pulling the vertices towards the constraint points, the user-defined points or the simulation given points. So I also want to minimize that. While doing that, I want to stick with the uh, I want to be close to original differential local coordinates. This is the whole idea. And now let me show you how the L matrix constructed this way. Here it is for this little toy mesh. Uh, how that L matrix will give me the desired differential coordinates, okay? The blue ones. It is basically L times V will be the delta. I put everything into a matrix and all the vertices into this long column vector. Then the corresponding deltas will be in this long column vector of size n by 1, where n is the number of vertices. Uh, okay, so for instance, for vertex 1, I have 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 5, and their entries. Uh, now, this is the real part where I really show you how to get that delta, remember the delta definition, it is the uh, difference, uh, so this is a rewriting of the initial formula I have given here, right, so vi, it doesn't depend on the index j, so I can pull it out of the uh, summation, so then I have this thing, it is easier to manipulate, uh, so for delta 1x for instance, so this is for, I will do it for the x coordinates only. So I will get the v1 itself because it is my base point and then I will just 
Ask the x coordinates of the neighbors, which are v2, v4 and v5. So this will hit v2, this will hit v4 and this will hit v5 here. Hence the corresponding delta 1. You will do it for the y and z coordinates as well. So now that I established L times V gives me the current delta and L times V0 the response coordinates gives me the old initial delta. I have this equation safely and I also have the data term where V wants to go to C. And to solve this it is just some matrix algebra here. I rewrite this squared distance by this transpose tactic. These are the same things. And as a common trick done in geometry processing, same goes here. So I expand this vt times v, vt times minus c and minus ct times v. So first of all, this term and this, they are the same, right? Because a transpose times b is equal to b transpose times a, times a, a basic identity. So I will keep two of the first one, get rid of this. Again, continuing, I keep lv as one package it's transpose hitting the original LV uh, and similarly I expand it into this form. Now go below a B transpose is equal to B transpose times a transpose another identity. I expand it like this LV is the same. Similarly this term like ATB is equal to BTA hence I will use just two of the first one and I will rewrite this with this identity and I also have this term uh, this is just copy pasted by just expanding it now the real interesting part is the following I have the EV that depends on V and I want to minimize this so take the derivative of this with respect to V and set it to zero notice that I couldn't I can't do it with this uh, formulation it is not easy to describe derivatives here, but now I am good to go. So what is the derivative of this? Like v square, I have 2v. Again, v goes away, 2c. No v, it is gone, gone completely. And from here, 2v and whatever remains with the alpha and else. And here v goes away, minus 2 times the remaining. And this is gone completely because there is nothing that... Uh, belongs that depends on v here which is my variable set it to zero so leave v alone uh, i end up with this formula which is basically a x equal to b right and luckily l is extremely sparse so this is a sparse system that can be solved in instantly yeah uh, okay so uh, compression another application where uh, I will use this framework, okay, uh, but now for the C, I will just use some control points, some few anchor points, uh, uh, and then I will use the L matrix, and here I will just use zero, okay, because I want L times V to go to zero. What does it mean? It means that all the delta coordinates are zero. So when does this happen? When the V is in the center of its neighbors. Okay, so just that tricky update in the same framework. And C are the control points. C in the end of it, uh, I will move all the vertices to the centers of their neighbors, right? Because of the losing of this term, which is still okay because this is still a nice mesh. Uh, and yeah, if you if you look at here, this is the compressed result of the original mesh. More smooth, but okay. Uh, and here let me emphasize that control point business again. I will store only the coordinates of a few anchor points, landmark points, which are the C's here. And also suppress the general Laplacian because I will use it to solve my framework. Uh, and it is sparse, so storing it is not a big deal. And this is all it, all of it. It's my compression. In the recovery time, I will solve this equation. I have, I want to solve for V. I already have C. I already have L. And this is all I need. And I do the recovery in linear time.
through this linear solve. Yeah, so this is also a nice application. Uh, here are more examples of that. If I use 100 control points, uh, I can still do recovery. But So this is like the JPEG compression, right? You can increase uh, the compression quality uh, by just using more bases. Here I am using more control points. With 10,000, 1,000, I am already good to go. Remember, originally I have 40,000 vertices. Similarly for the horse and for the other double torus. Another app uh, is going to be the parametrization, which is described here with a fun example. Uh, 3D, turfus in 3D gets to 2D. Uh, here the boundary is a square, but in general we prefer a disk in any uh, convex region works but this is automatically traceable um, with some cosine sine uh, updates so we put the boundary of the mesh to the map it to the uh, disk assuming that there is a hole that defines the boundary if not there are some cutting mechanisms but this is not the purpose here I am with the Laplacians here so Assume that I have the hole which defines my boundary, like the uh, cat hat here. This is the hole. There is nothing here. So I map this part to the convex region, which is easy to do. Like you can do it even manually or with the disk again. You can start with an arbitrary vertex and just uh, map it to a disk by just changing cosine and sine the theta. The real interesting part comes with the Laplace. What is it? The non-boundary vertices, like these ones, like the ones in the ear, etc., they are mapped so that each one is in the weighted center of its neighbors. Again, you can use uniform weights, then it is exactly in the center, or better, you can use cotangent weights. So, basically, I have the boundary conditions from the first item. I have that weighting using the W matrix which involves Laplacian and I solve for X using this simple linear solve X is equal to V inverse times B okay so what does it mean to put each vertex to the center of its neighbors again if uh, the sum or if this sum the vectors from the neighbors to the VI the current vertex, if they add to zero, then it means that I am in the center of my neighbors. So in this country example, for instance, it is not in the center, right? Then they don't cancel each other, so it is non-zero. So basically, uh, I will go to this uh, neighborhood analysis, which calls for the Laplacian. Again, deviation from your neighbors. It is the heart of the Laplacian. So, how to put that in action? So, I need to construct this W matrix and the B matrix, B, B column vector. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, they are mapped. 1 is here, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, if you look carefully, like 1 is going to coordinate 1, 2, okay, x1, y2, and 2 is, the second vertex is going to 2, 3 which makes sense, right, to one right and one up, two, three, etc. So let's focus on only the x-coordinates, then I will do the same for the y-coordinates. So I want to uh, get when v is hit uh, by x, I want to get these boundary results. So let me first show it here with my example then uh, it will be over actually. So I have this B matrix. I want to look for, solve for the uh, interior points uh, which are here. In, in this example, V7, V8 and V9. So they will be associated with the bottom part of this uh, matrix. Uh, but the up, 
upper part is just an identity because it is about the boundary conditions. Namely, V1 is equal to 1, right? V1 is equal to 1. V2 is equal to 2. V3 is equal to 3. So, and for instance, V5, where is it? The x component is 3. So, V5, it will hit 5. V5 is equal to 3. So, these are the equations in my system. But other than that, I also need these equations. Remember, for V7, for instance, I want the vectors from neighbors to V7, I want this sum to be 0. So, how to get that? To get that, uh, I will rewrite this by multiplying with minus 1. Then I have minus the minus 5 V7s. What is 5? It is the degree of 7. Okay, so 1, 3, 7, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I want 5 of it, which will hit this V7 for sure. And it will also hit its neighbors because I will add them back. Uh, I will get 1v1, 1v2, 1v3, 1v8, and 1v9. So 8 and 9, for instance, it will hit 8 and 9. And the tricky part is, this sum will be equal to 0. This is where the Laplace thing kicks in. Because, again, the intuition is that if that sum, these differences, some of these differences add to 0, then I am in the center, just like I want. So this global system, it will force the boundary conditions as well as those interior conditions and it will do it at once, so it will satisfy them. Um, and I end up with that mapping, that's it actually. Uh, but if I use uniform weight, in the end, vertex will be in the very center, in the center of the neighbors. But with the cotangent weights, it will be geometry aware, it will give you a better uh, result as you can see here the eyes are captured even better because I have different triangulations there in the original mesh yeah okay next application is going to be the remeshing the popular choice to do mesh decimation is by the quadric error metric it preserves appearance well but it doesn't consider the Laplacian, the spectrum of the Laplacian, so the algorithms, for instance, the previous algorithms that are designed for the Laplacian spectrum, like the heat kernel signature extraction or uh, segmentation, etc., uh, they will not work fine with the low resolution output because the spectrum here is gone in the quadric metric paper, which is, by the way, still a very useful uh, solution, but this paper is even better because it will also preserve the spectrum. So once you get low resolution and get the spectrum here, it will be more or less the same as the first initial original spectrum. So what? how do you do that? You will select the victim edges to collapse by selecting the ones who will affect the spectrum the least. Okay, this is the idea. Correspondence business, this uh, revolutionary functional maps framework introduced in 2012, instead of matching the points directly, they match the functions. This is the cool idea. And for functions, let's just use eigenfunctions of the Laplace map. Laplacian we have been talking about. Uh, so uh, this Laplacian for the source mesh, uh, I will get some with some coefficient AI for the it eigen function, and I also have the other on the other side on the target mesh. Uh, so to match the functions. Uh, I need to match A's and B's. And I can do it by this linear solve, C times A is equal to B, and it will be valid if you have enough A-B pairs. They use 100 in their paper. Uh, yeah, so with that, you can find the C matrix, which implies the correspondence. Uh, a totally different way to go with the Laplacian in the correspondence business is this coordinates 
this is the uh, remember a given eigenvector uh, is n by one. It's a column vector. If you have n vertices, uh, you have n components, and actually each of those components is one dimension in this embedding space. So here I am using only the first three components to get a three-dimensional space for visualization. Uh, so what this gives you is, it actually uh, gives a uniform output. So regardless of the pose of the original mesh, you go to this uh, embedding where Euclidean distances approximate the geodetic distances on the original domain. So for instance, if I bend the knee of this horse, the geodetic distance will not change. So that banded version, bent version, will still have the same embedding here. Then you can match them together. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, due to the Laplacian metric spectrum. Sometimes we also use other spectrums like geodesic affinity metric spectrum, but the idea is the same. It will give you these nice coordinates in the bottom. And when you use geodesic affinity, it is called multidimensional scaling. Actually, you can uh, to, uh, investigate more on this. Yeah. So, but it will give you a nice initialization to uh, match the two meshes. Uh, but so, if you wonder why is this distortion, so why they look so silly, so distorted, it is because this is inevitable. It is theoretically shown shown that. Uh, you cannot embed the original uh, points isometrically, i.e. distance preservingly, to the embedding space. In this example, for instance, I have distances of 1, 1, and 1 from green to red, and 1 from red to blue. So, okay, I can embed it such that red to blue is still 1, and red to green is still one, which would imply green to uh, blue to be two. Okay, no problem. Then if you do the same for the horizontal equator, uh, then it will imply that red and yellow will be on the same point. Because to satisfy above, I, I need to put red to that location, but for the horizontal point of view, I also need to put yellow to the middle of green and blue, which implies that the distance between red and yellow is zero, which is contradictory because the distance is non-zero in the original domain. So you need to move these vertices around so that uh, I minimize the difference sum. So I can keep it like this, but then there will be a terrible error for the yellow and red. Uh, so I can distribute this error. So I will move other vertices as well, which will eventually lead to this result. And the final application is the smoothing, where uh, the idea is to move each vertex towards the neighbor's weighted center. Again, it can be the uniform weight, then I just go to the uh, center, uh, but cotangent weight is better. Yeah, I have a picture of this here. So, in this scenario, for instance, even if the current vertex is closer to these two guys in the back, uh, I still move it to the middle, which will lead to these distortions. But in the cotangent version, which is geometry aware, that sticks with the original triangulation, I move it closer to the back side, okay, which will give you this uh, smoothing. Uh, obviously, it is different than the previous one. I am losing some high frequency details like the ears, but I am at least keeping the global shape. Yes, yeah, so the smoothing is that this is called Laplacian smoothing, by the way. Move each vertex towards its center, like uh, half this amount in this direction, not exactly here, but move it step by step. But still it will give some shrinking effect and in a follow-up work they also do the inflation 
like use the same direction but with a different scaling which is negative opposite sign so it will handle your smoothing without any shrinking and yeah so this is also showing the difference between uniform weights versus cotangent weights as you can see with the cotangent weights I uh, maintain the original triangulation as the areas are involved directly but with uniform I just discard it because everything gets to the middle which will eventually lead to these artifacts and actually it will also lead to the end of our uh, presentation so I hope that uh, it is clear now how we utilize the Laplace in many geometry processing applications okay thanks